I'm a big fan of John Deere tractors. They make a great tractor. But this is the single stupidest design flaw that they ever did on these tractors. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Got the sprayer warming up here. I uh, had a plan of what I was gonna do with the sprayer today. I got it filled up with water and I measured out my residual chemical to put on that last farm of soybeans. But I've already changed my plans. I'm uh, gonna put some Roundup in and go spray a cornfield where we had wheat last year because there's a lot of volunteer wheat. It's supposed to get windy today and I wanna get that wheat sprayed before the wind picks up. And there's also some rain coming next week. So that's what I'm gonna do. I, uh, I'm gonna pull this thing up here since I already got water in it. I'm just gonna pump my Roundup into the inductor on the sprayer. That way, yeah, because I can't put any more water in it. So let's pull it up there, get some Roundup in, and go spray that real quick. juice in there. Let's go get spraying because the wind is already picking up. Oh. So if you watched the last video, you'll know that yesterday was a pretty rough day. Didn't have very good luck yesterday, but today's going to be a good day. I can just feel it. The sun's out. It's going to be nice and warm. I'm already about to take this sweatshirt off. It's going to be a good day. So right as you can see, this field is pretty green. This was the field that was in wheat last year and then we had wheat beans. Now this year it's going to go to corn. And you might be wondering, well, why is there so much wheat out here, volunteer wheat? Our combine is not set up perfectly to harvest wheat. It doesn't have the right concaves in it, doesn't have the right sieves in it, so we just can't clean wheat as perfect as we should be able to. But Wheat is such a tiny fraction of our acres that we have to have a combine set up for corn and soybeans. So if we grew a lot of wheat, we'd probably do something different with the concaves. We can get most of the wheat, we can get a pretty clean sample, but it's just inevitable that you're gonna lose some when you're running a setup like we have on our combine. So that's why we have a lot of volunteer wheat. Shouldn't hurt anything, it's basically just like a cover crop. So we wanna get it killed off before it gets too windy and before it goes to raining. So let's get to spraying. back home come check this out I got something to show you we got concrete it's really echoey in here now they poured concrete the past two days just got it cut this morning we got our trough drain in here we still gotta get covers for it this is gonna be sweet final step in the shop is to get the walls sheeted and then we can get uh, our electrical put up on the walls and the thing will finally be getting close to done. I'm pretty pumped. All right, let's move on. I got to go grab a hydraulic hose for the field cultivator from the guy that we have make hydraulic hoses. Dad had to take that off and get it to him early this morning because he had to take off around 7.30 to do another job. So we told him just make it up and leave it outside. I'm gonna grab that hose, put it on there. I gotta work that field again. Tried to do it yesterday, but that didn't work. And then I can finally plant the last field of beans. So let's do that. Well, I had a few people say, we want more excavator videos. Well, you'll get a little clip of the excavator. I've actually gotta move it out of this field because this is the next field that Dad's gonna plant and I had to move some trees down at that end. So I need to move it out of this field over to that field around the corner of those trees. There's some CRP in that field so I can just park it in there and it won't be in anybody's way. So here it is guys. Hope it still runs. I 
need to get some front glass. This thing, like, it doesn't even turn over once and it fires. I don't understand it. idiot and I was looking for the sight glass for the hydraulic oil on this tractor and I could have swore it was in here by the transmission but it is right there on the side in plain sight I don't know why I forgot that but it is definitely low Maria you were right it's low on hydraulic oil so I'm gonna have to fix this go get some oil and uh, get this taken care of what wrenches do I need There we go. That should do it. Might need a 7 8 too. Alright, let's go. So, thankfully, it wasn't a very long hose. This goes right here to this valve. Um, not exactly sure. Must have went through underneath like this. Is that, is that right? Or did it go under here? <laughs> I'm just going to say that's how it goes. That seems to be the only way that it would get on this fitting. If I went over the top, that would be kinked pretty hard. So it's got to go like this. Well, got the hose back together. I'm guessing from how covered in oil this thing is, that hose was blown out for a while and I worked the 75 acres and didn't realize it. So that's probably why it's so low on oil. That would make sense. So now I have to go get some hydraulic oil and I have to uh, get it into the machine. This is um, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant. I'm a big fan of John Deere tractors. They make a great tractor. But this is the single stupidest design flaw that they ever did on these tractors. You have to take this body panel off to put hydraulic oil in it. Like, do you know how many times we've blown a hose and lost hydraulic oil? It's like a two or three time a year occurrence. So we're always having to put hydraulic oil and stuff. Why couldn't you just put the fill outside of the body panel? Like, why? Just dumb. So I gotta take all these little bolts out just to put hydraulic oil in. Doesn't that seem silly? Body panel's off. See, why couldn't they have just extended this spout and put it right out here on the outside? That would be way more convenient. I got 15 gallons because that's all the empty jugs and buckets I could find. I sure hope that's enough. All right, Let's see how many gallons it takes. Well, I put everything I had in, it's kind of hard to see, but it's right there just below the full cold line. I'm probably going to lose a little bit when I start it because it's going to get everything primed back up. But uh, I think it's going to be enough to run for this field. And I'll just have to top it off later. So let's put this thing back together, get something done. You know, it would have made sense to just leave that off since I got to put more in it. The things you think of after you do them. I guess it probably would have blown away anyway. It's pretty windy, so, oh well. Pretty dusty. So this field was already worked once, but it's uh, pretty rough. And we would like to get this field into a strip-till, no-till uh, rotation. And we don't want to start out with something rough because we had that happen last year. We left the field rough and then it's still rough to this day. So if you want to get it nice and level, this is hopefully the last time we're going to do any tillage on it for a while. So we got to get it nice and smooth. So we're working it again. So just, you know, burning fuel, burning elevator sweeps, burning time. It is what it is. And I guess I should explain, the only reason why we chiseled this field last fall is because it got tiled and those tile runs are super rough, especially with the sprayer. And the only way to get them leveled out that we found is to just bite the bullet, chisel it, field cultivate it the next year. Sometimes you even have to do it a couple times. And that's about the only way to get the field back in shape. So normally we would have no-tilled beans if it wasn't for that tile, which we're really happy that it got tiled. It needed it. But uh, yeah, normally we no-till. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Look who came to visit me. Say hi. Hi. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, you can see yourself on the camera. So, uh, you guys notice anything different about my wife? Yeah. Yeah? Here it does. Here it does. Oh, uh, maybe you guys could put in the comments trying to figure out what's different about her. Got the field done. I'm gonna run over and get the tractor and the air seeder. Get these beans planted. Now before I get started here, I guess before I take off, I gotta put a gauge wheel on. Had a uh, cut in one of the gauge wheel tires, so I changed this the other day. Throw that on real quick and get going down the road. Damn, it's a long bolt. we go. So this field is 75 acres. It's our farthest field from home. And by far, I mean it's six and a half miles away, so not really that far. But it's kind of a pain because the actual field entrance is a rickety old farm bridge that you don't want to trust anything heavier than a pickup truck crossing. And to get to the field, we have to go all the way around the next section over because nothing will fit through that bridge right there. The sprayer fits. I think the corn planter would fit, 
but like field cultivator, combine, air seeder won't fit. So you gotta go four miles around the next section. And then, thankfully this uh, guy, the neighbor farmer here has a filter strip along the ditch. So he lets us drive our equipment through his filter strip to get to the field. So it's a pretty decent farm. It's now that it's tile, it's, it's really good. So it's definitely worth farming, but it's just kind of a pain to get to. But here I am complaining about silly things, I guess. Anyways, let's go plant some beans. I'll show you that old wooden bridge when we get over there. So before I get started here, I gotta change some settings on the air seeder. This thing was built for no-till. It really doesn't do that great of a job in conventional tillage situations. So we're set for no-till right now. We gotta lighten things up a little bit. First thing I gotta do, this is the pressure, down pressure gauge for your units, and I've been running it in the yellow area, so I'm gonna back that down a little bit. We'll try that. Just in the uh, edge of the green, we might have to back that down a little bit more. Next thing I need to do is the closing wheel pressure. I need to, I got it on the heaviest setting now. I'm gonna move that to the middle setting and I might even lighten it up to the lowest setting if I have to. So I'm gonna go through and change all them. Then we can plant some beans. I've used markers but uh, normally I got corn stalks to follow and in this tilled ground I need something to look at when I'm doing my borders so I don't have any AB lines set up yet. I made a couple passes around the field I'm gonna dig and see how deep we're planting. It's really hard to get the depth you want in this uh, field cultivated ground. It's loose and fluffy and like I said that thing's meant for no-till so it's just kind of all over the board in this type of ground so Let's see what we got here. Oh, I got plenty of moisture back here. It's a little bit heavier ground. I know in the lighter areas, it's gonna be, it's gonna have to have a rain or these beans won't come up, so. Working the ground twice like that. Okay, there's a bean. That actually doesn't look too bad. About an inch and a quarter. I'd like to go about an inch and a half. This is a little bit heavier spot here, so it's probably an inch and a half from the lighter ground. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I think that'll work. Boy, it's dusty. As much as I wanna get done planting corn, we really could use the rain. I forgot to take a clip of the uh, rickety old wooden farm bridge yesterday when I was spraying, so I'm gonna add this in. We put a new deck on the top, but when we took the top off, we realized that those poles underneath, there's four wooden poles, they're completely rotted out, and they're just completely soft in the middle, so you don't wanna trust anything real heavy on that bridge. So I kinda forgot that I was supposed to be filming. Uh, I assessed the job that the air seeder is doing, and it's uh, doing about as good as it can in this, this ground situation. It, uh, like I said, definitely not meant for this type of tillage. It's a no-till system. It's meant for pushing through hard ground and it just doesn't do well in this soft ground. So it is what it is. I got about 20 acres left in the 75 and we call it a night after that. It's uh, sun's about to go down and we had a pretty good day. Yesterday was not a good day. Today was a pretty good day. So I'm happy about that. Dad's been playing corn all day. We're probably about half done with corn. So that's pretty good for the 5th of May, I would say. Um, we got all our beans in in April, except this field. So that's, I don't know if, I, no, that's definitely never happened before. So normally don't get started with anything until after the 1st of May. So that, I think we're doing pretty good this year. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I don't know how good this camera does in the dark, so I'm just gonna shut it off here. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one. And that's the last pass. We are done with beans. The uh, sun wasn't down, so I figured I'd uh, add one more clip to this video. So that's all I got. Peace out.